الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين كما بعد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتاب المجيد بعد عبد الله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا يؤاخذكم الله باللغو في أيمانكم ولكن يؤاخذكم بما عقدتم الأيمان فكفارته إطعام عشرة مساكين من أوسط من أوسط ما تطعمون أهليكم أو كسوتهم أو تحرير رقبة فمن لم يجد فصيام ثلاثة أيام ذلك كفارة أيمانكم إذا حلفتم واحفظوا أيمانكم كذلك يبين الله لكم آياته لعلكم تشكرون صدق الله مولانا العظيم الله تبارك وتعالى says that Allah will not grab you, will not seize you, will not call you to question regarding those oaths, vows, promises that you have made in love which is to say that you've made without intending them, without meaning them. If you vow idly, Allah will not call you to bear. Though this in itself is sinful. To make a promise that you were never intending to keep, that you never intended to be serious about, but to vow and to swear anyhow, this is a grievous sin. But Allah will not call you to account regarding those but instead, Allah will seize you. He will seize you all from those promises that you have made in good faith that you break. The kathara, the compensation that has to be given if you've broken an oath, is to feed ten poor people, or to clothe them, or to free a slave. And the one who is not able to do this, the one who is not able to afford these things, then he must fast three days. This is the kathara, this is the compensation to those who break the oath. So Allah says, وَحْفَظُوا أَيْمَانَكُمْ So, guard your oaths. And such does Allah explain His ayat, His signs, so that you may be grateful. My respected brothers and sisters in Islam, it is one of the standard jokes about Muslims and about our Ummah that we can never keep a promise. We can never keep an appointment, Muslim standard time, two hours late, an hour late. It's a standard joke about our people that our words don't mean anything. That when we give a promise, don't count on us to respect it, don't count on us to stand to it. My respected brothers and sisters in Islam, this is not the way of the believer. This is not the way of Rasulullah We have such an issue in our communities of keeping to schedules, of keeping on time, of keeping the promises, of keeping our oaths. Such are the things that will make the difference between those who are saved and those who are not saved on the Day of Judgment. Rasulullah was known as what? Can anybody name his nicknames? al amin al the trustworthy, the truthful. Amin, same root as Amen. Vows. Rasulullah was known as the one who would never break his vow, could always be trusted with anything. Alayhi salatu wasalam. Respected brothers and sisters in the sun, as I was talking about yesterday, we have an obligation in this month to get closer not only to the Quran but to implementing the Qur'an in our lives. This particular ayah needs implementation, and to see how to implement it, we must not look to any place other than the Prophet ﷺ. Indeed, his example is the most supreme in all things. And I'll tell you a little secret about our condition as a people. It is my theory that in part, a part of the reason why we are where we are as a people, and why the kuffar are where they are, as a people, is because if I think about it, if I have to trust somebody to keep to a schedule, I can probably trust a kafir. I can probably trust a kafir 
to be honest and trustworthy in his business dealings because he finds it to be profitable. He finds it to be efficient. Not saying necessarily for a good reason. Some of them do so for good reasons, but even just for practical reasons. Allah will not change our state until we change what is about ourselves. So one of the first things we can do is to become amongst those, every single word that comes out of our tongue, let us hope to speak the truth. And this means, first and foremost, on any oaths and vows that we take. And keep in mind that any oath that is taken on anything other than Allah Ta'ala is a level oath from the Sharia. Any oath that is taken on anything, people say on my mother's grave, all sorts of things you can swear by. All of these things are love. The only thing on which in Sharia is accepted to take an oath that has any weight is on the name of Allah Ta'ala. And if you take an oath on the name of Allah Ta'ala, this ayah applies if you break it. And this is a huge thing, to take an oath on the name of Allah Ta'ala. So let us not be amongst those that make oaths in vain, and let us not be amongst those who break our oaths when we make when we make them in good faith. أقول قولي هذا وسأفر الله يوكل سائر المسلمين استغفروه إنه رحيم سبحان الله بحمدي أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله استغفروه ونتوب إليه.